Now that we've covered all three types of graphs in physics, position, velocity, and acceleration, we're now gonna talk about how to translate between graphs. What I mean by that is that if you're given one type of graph, like a position graph of a single object, you should also be able to draw the velocity and acceleration graph of the same object. This is because we can get a lot of information about that object's motion from any one graph. And if we can get information about its motion, we can figure out the other two graphs as well. For example, this graph here is a position graph of a person running very fast and then slowing to a stop. And we can also understand what the velocity and acceleration graph for that same motion would look like. The velocity graph would look like this, and the acceleration graph would look like this. So there should be a way of getting information about these graphs from each other. They should all be related in some mathematical way. And that's what this lecture is going to talk about. So I'm going to start by having you copy down this pattern of how to convert from position to velocity to acceleration graphs, or vice versa. If we're going down this list, you're going to use the slope of the graph to determine what the next graph looks like. And if you're going up the list, you're going to use the area under the curve of the graph to determine what the next graph looks like. I'm going to talk about that in more detail. For now, I just need you to copy down these rules. I also need you to copy down rules that you've learned from previous videos. For example, the slope on a position time graph is equal to the velocity, the slope on a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration, and the area under the curve of a velocity time graph is the change in position, and the area under the curve of an acceleration time graph is a change in velocity. I also need you to copy down that picture directly above my head of the different slopes. Um, some students get this confused, so I just want to emphasize that that very steep slope at the top is very positive. A flat, perfectly flat horizontal line has no slope, and a very steep slope going down is a very negative slope. This is going to be really important for translating these graphs. I'm going to keep this little table in the corner of the video just to show which two types of graphs I'm translating between. And I'm going to start by translating from a position to a velocity graph and show you how to do that. So on a position time graph, slope is equal to velocity. So if I can see what the slope of a position time graph is doing, I can also see what the velocity will be and what the velocity graph is doing. For example, if I have a very steep slope on my position time graph, that means that the slope is very positive. And you can see that the slope is staying constant. It's not getting bigger or smaller. So that means that the velocity would be constant and positive like this. So that would just be a flat line. It's staying at the same velocity and it's very positive. If I have a less positive slope on the position time graph, that would result in a less positive but still positive velocity that's staying constant, so those two green lines correspond. If I have a slope of zero on the position time graph, that means that I also have a slope of zero on the velocity time graph, like this. And if I have these negative slopes, that's what the negative velocities would look like as well. So you can see if I have a constant slope on the position time graph, I have a constant velocity on the velocity graph. And constant velocity on a velocity graph is just represented by a flat line. And you'll notice that it doesn't matter what position I start from. That's not really an issue. All that matters here is the slope. So in this case, these are at different positions, but they're all slopes of zero. And so the velocity graph of this would just be zero for the whole time. Now let's look at another graph like this. So here I can see that the position starts off very positive and constant, goes to zero and constant, and then goes negative and constant. So that means that the velocity is also going to start very positive and constant, go to zero and constant, so it's flat and then become negative and constant like this. So that would be how I would translate the velocity graph um, from the position graph. A lot of times we draw these vertical lines to help us see similar times. So each vertical line corresponds to the same time on both graphs, just so you know when a graph is changing. If I have a position graph that looks like this, the velocity starts off negative because the slope is negative and constant, and then it becomes positive and constant. So this is what that velocity graph would look like. So now that you're understanding how to work with um, straight line position graphs, I'm going to talk about curved position graph. This is something we haven't talked about before. So on a curved position graph, we want to know what is the slope doing. If we can figure out what the slope is doing, we'll know what the velocity graph looks like as well. While you're doing this, I'm going to strongly encourage you to use a trick that I use for translating these graphs. And my trick is to draw these little tangent lines along the graph to show me what the slope is doing at each point. It's very simple, you just draw straight lines that imitate what the slope is doing at that point. And this can help you visualize what the velocity is doing. So I can see from my graph that the first line that I drew is flat. So that means that the slope starts off at zero. So that means that the velocity starts off at zero as well. And then after, the slope is becoming more and more positive. So that means that the velocity becomes more and more positive over time. So that is what the velocity graph would look like for that curved position line. And I can find that using those tangent lines. Here's another example. Let's say you have a graph that looks like this. Um, it's difficult for me to visualize what that velocity graph would look like until I make those tangent lines. So here I can see that the velocity is starting off very negative because that first line that I drew at the y-intercept is going very far down very fast, so that means that the velocity is very negative. 
and it eventually goes to zero. That last line that I drew is flat, which is a slope of zero, which means a velocity of zero. So the velocity starts negative and goes to zero, like this. Now here's a more complicated graph. Um, again, I'm just gonna draw the tangent lines and see what's going on. So I can see here that the velocity starts off very positive. The slope is very positive on the position graph. The slope of the position graph is becoming less positive. It's getting closer and closer to zero until it hits zero at that middle point. So that means that the velocity is also going to become smaller and smaller until it hits zero. After it does that, I can see that the slope is becoming more and more negative. So that means that the velocity graph is actually going to cross that axis and go into the negatives like that until it becomes very negative. So that is the velocity graph of that position graph based on those tangent lines. And again, I can draw that vertical dotted line just to show that these are happening at similar times. So now let's try converting backwards. Let's start with a velocity graph and go to a position graph. So the velocity tells you what the slope of the position time graph is doing. So let's say we have a graph that looks like this. If it looks like this, I'm going to use that same trick but in reverse where I draw tangent lines to show me what the slope is doing. So here I can see that the velocity is very positive and constant. So that means that I'm going to draw tangent lines that have a positive slope and that are constant. The slopes are not getting bigger or smaller. They're the same slope for every line. And then I just draw a line using those tangent lines as a guide. And so that would be my position time graph. Just remember that the velocity graph tells you nothing about where the position will begin. So I can begin this position graph from anywhere I want. Now I'm going to drop the velocity down a little. Let's say that it's lower. All that that means is that the slopes are smaller, they're less positive, but they're still constant. So this is what that position versus time graph would look like. If the velocity is staying constant at zero, that means the slope is staying constant at zero. And so again, I can really start this position time graph from anywhere that I want, like this. And just make sure that the slope is zero the whole time. And if the velocity is negative, that just means that the tangent lines have a negative slope. And here you can see they'll have a very negative slope, so that means I draw it like this. Okay, now let's get a little more complicated. Here the slope is going to be constantly changing. So I can see in my velocity graph that the graph is starting at a velocity of zero and getting very negative. So that means that the slope of the position graph is going to start with a slope of zero, a flat line, but then get a more and more negative slope as it goes. So the other tangent lines would get more and more negative like this. Just remember their slope is getting more and more negative, not necessarily their actual position. And so that would be what that line looks like for the velocity graph. Again, I could have started that position graph at any position. I just had to start it with a slope of zero. Here's a more complicated one. I can see the velocity starts very negative, goes to zero, and then becomes very positive. So that means for the position time graph, the tangent line is going to start with a very negative slope and get smaller and smaller in slope until it gets to a slope of zero and then continue to get more and more positive like that. So that's what that position time graph would look like. You can also use the fact that the area under the curve can equal the change in position. So this one would start with a very negative change in position. And as you go, it's getting to be a, a smaller and smaller change in position until its position is not changing and then gets larger and larger and larger. I honestly still like to use my tangent line trick for this, but you can use that method as well. So now let's shift to translating from velocity graphs to acceleration graphs. So velocity graphs and acceleration graphs operate on the same rule. The slope of the velocity graph is equal to the acceleration. So let's say that you have a velocity graph like this. Here I can see that that slope is positive and constant, so the acceleration will be positive and constant. If it's less positive and constant, the acceleration will be less positive, but will stay at that constant spot. If the change in velocity is flat, if the slope is not changing at all, if it's zero, that means that the acceleration is zero. If it's negative, the acceleration is a little negative. And if it's very negative, the acceleration is very negative as well. Again, it doesn't matter what velocity you're at. All that matters is the slope of the velocity graph, so here that acceleration would be flat the whole time. Here's a more complicated example where you start with a very negative slope, you have a zero slope and then a positive slope. The acceleration just starts negative, goes to zero, and then becomes positive. And I'll draw those vertical lines just to show you where those things are. So you're never going to get more complicated velocity graphs than that. We don't really deal with curved velocity graphs in high school physics. That's just a little too complicated. So here are a few more examples. I'm going to play through them pretty fast. Just watch them, try to take in what's going on. And then we're going to change to converting acceleration back to velocity graphs. Okay, let's say I have an acceleration graph that is positive and constant. That means that the slope of the velocity graph is going to be positive and constant, so I draw those tangent lines that are going to be positive and constant going up, so that means that the velocity graph would look like this. And the acceleration graph does not tell you what velocity to start with, so you can start this velocity graph anywhere you would like. If the acceleration is zero the whole time, that means that the slope of the velocity graph is zero the whole time, like this. And if the acceleration is negative, that means that the slope of the velocity graph is constant and negative like this. So that's what my tangent lines would look like. Now let's say we have a change in the acceleration graph from a negative to a positive. That just means that the slope of the velocity graph starts off negative, and at that point it becomes positive, like this. So that, those would be my tangent lines, and that would be my line. 
And you can also use the area again. You can see here that the area under the curve of an acceleration graph is equal to the change in velocity. So if you have a very negative area, that means that you have a very negative change in velocity or the velocity is dropping a lot. And if you have a positive area, that means that the velocity is increasing. And again, I really prefer to just use my tangent line method, but it'll be important for you to remember this method as well. So now that you have that example, I'm just going to go through a few examples of converting through all three graphs from being given just one and getting the other two from graph translation. So this is going to be an essential skill and you're actually going to be working on a worksheet on this shortly. So I'm just going to show you a few examples. So let's say that you just have this position graph and you want to get to the velocity and acceleration graph for the same object. All you have to do is convert down one graph at a time because you know how to go from position to velocity and then from velocity to acceleration. So we can see that the slope of that position graph is positive and constant. So that means that the velocity itself is positive and constantly at the same velocity. So it would look like this graph right here. And if that velocity graph is flat, that means that the velocity itself has a slope of zero and acceleration is the slope of a velocity graph. So the acceleration graph would just be at zero the whole time. So that's what that graph would look like. And I just converted from position all the way down to acceleration. And that is the skill that I'm expecting you to leave this video with and leave today with. Let's say we have a more complicated position time graph going up like this at a curve. So I draw those tangent lines to help me out with the conversion so I can see that the velocity starts at zero and then becomes positive. So that means on my velocity graph it starts at zero and becomes very positive. And then I draw tangent lines for that graph to see what the acceleration is doing. Just remember the slope on a velocity graph is the acceleration and that's positive and constant. So the acceleration itself is also positive and constant. So I just converted from another position to an acceleration graph. Now let's try converting from a velocity graph to both of the other two types. I'm going to start with position because that's a little more difficult. I can see that because velocity is the slope of a position graph, the, the slope is starting very positive and then going down to zero. So it goes from positive to zero down to a very negative slope like that. So that is what my position time graph would look like. And one more time, Velocity graph does not tell you where to start on a position graph in terms of position. Now going down to acceleration, the slope of that velocity graph is constant and negative, so that means the acceleration is constant and negative like that. I'll do another one. Let's say that we have an acceleration graph and we want to go up. Here the acceleration graph starts positive and ends negative, so that means that the slope of the velocity graph is going to start positive and then start going down in a negative way like this. And so for the position graph, this one's going to be a little weird. I can see that the velocity starts at zero because that's where I chose to start my velocity graph. So the slope is going to start at zero and then get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then after it reaches a certain very positive amount, it's going to get smaller. It's still positive. It's still aiming in that upward direction, but it's getting closer and closer to zero again because the velocity itself is getting closer and closer to the x-axis, the zero point. So that means that the slope of the position graph is getting closer and closer to zero. So that's what that slope would look like and that's what that position would, graph would look like. So this is the conclusion. This is what I wanted you to take away from the video. Honestly, the way that you get good at this is just by practicing it a ton until it sticks in your head and correcting the mistakes that you make along the way. So please talk to me and your class partners as you go.